welcome to Spellcast, the Gaming Wizards podcast. And the only thing we do that has an actual intro that we say. <laughs> Which, I feel like we should we should workshop the whole intro and outro stuff. Just in general. Yeah, just like on a, on a per episode thing or, you know, because usually I can just kind of like time out episodes between one of us saying next episode we'll do the thing and then you say all right now we're on the next episode basically so yeah <laughs> and so, sometimes i can cut sometimes i cut out you saying all right and because right. you know, it just goes like right into whatever yeah. but sometimes it makes it makes an okay intro so yeah <laughs> it, it's most like i like you say that and i i don't think i've ever like really mentally registered that i do that I, it's just kind of like a way for my like brain to just kind of like reset like okay yeah no, now it's... we're going again <laughs> yeah and one thing i speaking of not noticing that you say things i say i mean and you know a lot <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah we all like, have those uh like vocal tics that we we don't think about but then like we listen to ourselves and it's like yeah oh. and it's, it's just like oh i am saying i'm saying that way too many times is that is that gonna be annoying to somebody listening to this or am i just overthinking that or i don't know <laughs> I, mean... I i notice it in my in my writing because most of the communication i do with other people is through typing um and i'm talking to people all the time and I notice I use the word like a lot. Yeah. Like that's... a lot, a lot. Um... <laughs> I also do that a lot, but probably not as much as I think. But I did notice that a lot, too, when I was going back and listening to some of the recordings. Like on Spellcast. Yeah. Usually when we're, when we're playing a game, there's... It's more... It's easier to, like, focus... I just said like again <laughs> it's it's easier to focus and talk specifically about things instead of having a conversation just off the top of your head and that might kind of devolve into a rant and just end up having to fill in see i'm i'm consciously trying not to do not to say things yeah. that i that i think i say too much and it ends up with a lot of pauses and dead air <laughs> it, it's it's a it's a buffering system right yeah. where your brain has to stop to like buffer and fill out like the next part of what you want to say yeah. um but yeah it's it's something that i i am very aware that i do just because i've seen it in my writing so much hmm. um just how i describe things and explain stuff so i like I just, I can't help it, yeah. you know? Um, but yeah, so, games. Games, yeah. We'll just, no uh, no segue into that. We'll, we're just... Uh, <laughs> just just games. Just That's our segue. Just a hard, hard right into a different topic. So, yeah. Um, even as recently as the last couple of spellcasts, I had finished uh, The Last of Us 2. I had... I got it and played it and finished it. So, yeah. I mean, I wasn't really that interested in playing it, really, because I, I played the first one, and, and I just thought, that's that's all right. That's a, that's a game. These characters are interesting. It was okay to get to know them. It was it was fun, I guess, in, a, in its way. It was a... It's more serious than, you know, most games, but... Sure. Yeah. Uh, and the second one came out, and there was a big leak, a lot of spoilers, and it did kind of... That was before I had even played the first game. Okay. So, yeah, I don't even know if I had a... I don't even know if I had a system that I could have played it on by that point yet, but... Yeah, it just um I was surprised because the the big leak, the major spoiler that came out was that 
I mean, a major character dies. I don't... Spoilers for The Last of Us and The Last of Us 2 and say, the whole series, I, I, I think I guess. it's been out long enough it's, at this point yeah, it's that probably you can just been kind out of freely enough, talk. So, yeah, um, and I, I'm pretty sure we've talked about this on another spellcast before that there were like... I think it was closer to when the leaks actually happened and when the game actually came out, but yeah, I Possibly. was... I was surprised to learn that Joel dies because I was convinced that he died in the first game at some point. <laughs> I had not played because I hadn't played yeah. the first game. I didn't know anything about it, but I did see a clip from mm, like 80% of the way into the game, I guess, because there's a section where you play as Ellie. Yeah. Because, and I just assumed that that was because Joel had died. <laughs> and in context, okay. it's because he's just really badly hurt, so she's, you know, taken over, taking care of him and all that stuff while he's hurt. So, yeah, I was really surprised when the leak came out, and it's like, oh my god, Joel dies! I'm like, he was alive? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um... And, uh, yeah, it was... Knowing that it happened still didn't really... Uh soften the blow or anything when it happened in the game because i did i did like all the characters pretty much from the first game so but between playing the first game and eventually deciding like maybe i'll give the second one a try i i went into it knowing knowing that you know a lot of these bad things were going to happen to these characters i liked and yeah yeah maybe that i don't know maybe that did lessen the impact a little bit but also, like, I like the opening of the game. I like the intro. Okay. Because it, it feels kind of like the, the first game where it's like a serious atmosphere, but the characters are just interacting with each other. And sometimes they make jokes and sometimes like funny things happen. And sure. it's, you know, there's some comic relief to it and it makes it more enjoyable. And that just vanishes as soon as they kill off Joel. Yeah, I mean, that and makes it is, sense. It is pretty much nothing, but this is just... Everything is awful. Yeah, everything um, is awful. Nothing is nothing is going to get better. This just is terrible. Everything sucks. I don't... I don't want to follow these characters anymore. It's just, I just... Because they're, they're not... They're not the characters I liked from the first game anymore. They, it's like they're new characters, which does make sense because there's a several year time yeah, skip, a huge so they've had time, time to, jump. So time to people change, develop off screen. Contrary to popular belief, but, yeah, it just I don't know the the tone. The for the first hour or so of the game, the tone feels like the first game because you, you have the interactions between like Ellie and Joel and their sure relationship and they, they mess with each other they they make jokes they it's it's not too serious and i think from from that point on in the second game it's too serious that's fair um and i know that they yeah, were just... going for a much more um oh how, like how to phrase this like the first game is very much just like a it's it's kind of a zombie apocalypse and there's some stuff going on and it's it kind of approaches that almost casually I feel um yeah it, it, it kind of it's like they've gotten used to living in this world with the zombies they know yeah. how to deal with them and all that and and there's and some like commentary about how like people interact with each other and how like society responds to these kind of things um humans are the real monsters yeah it's... your usual zombie story basically they go um, hard on that in the second game yeah the the second like, game the i know they want to almost kind much... of seem like an afterthought yeah like... Well, they are. They're 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 dressing. They're they're setting dressing. They were going for a much like deeper, more involved, thought provoking kind of story, and like like what they do with the perspective shift where you change characters partway through the game. Mm -hmm. Like 
that has a very important narrative purpose and And that was that was actually another thing too but a lot of people i think missed that because no one was looking for this like deep narrative like no that's not what people were wanting people were just wanting to have fun in the zombie apocalypse and kill some zombies they wanted revenge for joel's death like for this character they were already attached to Mm -hmm. they didn't want to basically confront the very like serious deep like message that they were trying to point out with the game the the people you are trying to kill are people too so yeah and And it's 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 a a a cycle of revenge then like the whole purpose is supposed to be like you can keep doing the cycle or like you can break the cycle because it's just tragedy after tragedy if you just keep yeah. flowing through this cycle. Um, but yeah, like, I understand why a lot of people disliked that, but I actually think the game is better for it. Like, I, I've never had much interest in the franchise. Played a little bit of the first one and like saw some pieces here and there when some other friends were playing it and I was over and like it to me, it just came off as like the most mediocre by the numbers, like zombie story you could have. I like the stealth mechanics. Sure. For for the most part. But like, but yeah, like that to me was not all that interesting. Um, but I acknowledge that it was this huge, like, phenomenon, and it was, like, one of these really big games that got a lot of attention, and... Okay, sure, pe- other people can enjoy it. Um, after the second game came out, uh, it was actually a Noah Caldwell Gervais video uh, about both games, and mm-hmm. he talks about, like, the narrative structure, and, you know, he goes full spoilers on it like he does with all his stuff. Um... And watching that and learning, like, the full depth of the story of the second game specifically and very specifically that shift in perspective with characters, like, that has me more interested in wanting to play the game than anything that happens in the first game. Um, Like, I want to play the first game just for that narrative impact of the second one kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, it's still a series that is very low on my priority list, so... Yeah. I I really only even decided to get the second one and play through it because the show came out. And okay. Yeah, I watched it, and they... Because it came out after the second game, they in the show, they're able to set up things for what will probably be seasons two and three of the of the show. So they focus right. a, focus a little more on some of the other things that they decided to make They can important kind of foreshadow the, yeah, stuff a little better. Because, like, they... That's uh, fair. You know, at the end of the first game, he shoots the doctor who's about to, you know, put uh, Ellie, like, under anesthesia and do the surgery that will kill her and maybe save humanity. Maybe not. Nobody's really a hundred percent sure on that, but but yes. And that doctor turns out to be, uh, the father of the character who kills Joel in the second game. Yeah. And that's why she does it. So, uh, in the, in the show, when they do that, the, it kind of, the camera like kind of pans down to his body on the floor for, and it just sits on it for like a second, a little longer than you would think. And you think, oh, I see what they're doing there. If you've played the game, if you played both right. games, and if you haven't seen, if you haven't played the game or, you know, don't know anything about it, just like, huh, that's weird that they would focus on him for, you know, yeah. one or two seconds longer than I would think. But yeah, but okay. if, if you know, you know, and if you don't know, it's, it, it just seems like, oh, yeah. He it's killed, he inconsequential killed. if yeah. you don't know. Yeah. Like yeah. Joel, Joel kind of seems like an asshole. He just shot that doctor for seemingly little reason, but. Let's, yeah. let's be honest, Joel is kind of an asshole. Oh yeah, definitely. And like they, <laughs> and they like they even in the second game, like they before they know like why Abby killed Joel and all that. 
they're trying to figure out like well who could have done this who how many people has he pissed off in his life you know who and it, and she talks to his brother and he's like I don't know it could have been any number of people and yeah it's just like yeah he was kind of an asshole um yeah and, and, and he was becoming less of an asshole because he basically got his daughter back so it's you know yeah. more 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 tragedy more more sadness more beating you over the head with how dark and depressing this game is and yeah. it goes on for way too long um like this that's fair the like the point where it where you play as abby for like a good it's like half the game yeah like, no, I, I did not know that. Like I thought, yeah, it's literally like a halfway through. Like, when when I was when I was first hearing lasts about almost towards the end. Yeah, when I was first hearing about people being pissed off, is because they're like, oh no, th- this random new character comes in and kills Joel, and then they make you play as her. I was I was thinking, oh, they they make you like do some little little chunk of the game as her. No, it's it's fully yeah, almost no. half the fucking game. <laughs> She has her own whole thing that's going on that, like, she's not even aware of the fact that Ellie is hunting her down and killing yeah. all these people to get to her specifically. And I like the characters that she meets. Most, I mean, the the ones who aren't trying to kill her for whatever their own reasons are. But it, I don't. It didn't. It didn't make me like her. It didn't really i don't know i just i didn't hate it for the reasons that a lot of other people hated it i just think it made the game go on for too long for having the tone that it does fair enough without without any kind of break in like there's a a few bits in there where you get like the flashback bits yeah there's which which kind of break it up a little bit yeah and um yeah, I don't know. It's just yeah, it's it's a very it could have heavy. It could have been two games. It could have been uh, Last of Us Two and then Last of Us Three or two and a half or I don't know, like a DLC or something. It just it was too long for, and maybe it wouldn't have been a problem if it wasn't just so obsessed with being dark and depressing as it was. Mm, that's like, fair. That, that's my biggest complaint because i mean the the game mechanics and all that it's it's fine there are yeah. zombies and a lot more people than zombies and there are some new zombies and some really intense boss fights that you aren't really told what to do and you just kind of oh god, I'm just going to unload everything in my arsenal at this thing and hope it dies, and I hope there's not some kind of cutscene trigger that I have to do because I am not going to find it because this arena is like a maze. So Great. Yeah, the it best. was... I didn't hate that boss fight, though. Like, it was... I died a few times to it, but it was intense and... Like, terrifying, honestly, because it was kind of in a dark sort of maze-like area. There was pl- plenty of uh, resources for you to use and all that. So, I was just mostly concerned with, I hope the answer to this is shoot it until it dies and not find the one interactable item in this find maze. Find the MacGuffin. Yeah, yeah, where it's like, oh, you have, you pull this lever and it drops a thing on the thing and the thing explodes and sets something on fire and then the thing dies, but... No, the answer was just light it on fire with whatever you have, shoot it until it dies. So, yeah. Fun. And don't let it grab you because it will kill you in a very gruesome cutscene worthy of dead space. <laughs> nice. Depending on which uh, which boss it is or if it's just a regular... Uh, or if it's something that you fight as a boss the first time and then you counter it like normally just yeah. later. Like they do that sometimes. They didn't do that with the big one, but there were some... Where it's, it's like they weirdly redesigned some of the special zombies from the first game and gave them new names, but they're still basically the same thing. So I, I don't really know why they decided to do that, other than maybe they wanted to just make a new design. 
but they yeah. didn't have any ideas for what it could do differently. So, so they just recycled. <laughs> yeah, and I, I guess there is a little bit of justification because it's in like a different region, so it's like, oh, the fungus grows differently in different, you know, temperate environments or whatever. So sure, because the, the yeah, it's like the part where you go to like California and it's like hot desert environment. But you still see most of the same zombies, so it's like, okay, why did why are these zombies, you know, up north, but also down here, like in the south southern desert environment, when the justification was the environment for them being different? I don't know. It was yeah, mi- minor nitpick. They, it's a new game; they have to make new things for it. So no, no complaints about that. It was just yeah. it just seemed kind of weird that. It, that it was basically the same zombies, but they named them differently and acted like they were a new thing. But it's like it's just the same mechanic. Like we we, over we saw again. we saw these things in the first game. They do basically the same thing. I guess they're smaller, so they're not as tough. But still, I don't know. Um, well, one thing I do want to say about the show, and it's less about the show itself because I haven't watched it. I don't really have any intention of watching it either. Um, but more just about um the the wider media reaction to the show can we stop being like oh my god video game adaptations are finally good like they've been good for a long time now all right like stop hyping it up as if it's the first time we've ever had a good video game related thing and there are still bad ones out there yeah there's still bad ones but like detective pikachu is right there guys come on (laughs) that movie was great is it perfect? No. But it's still good. Um, same with Sonic, right? Like, both Sonic movies yeah, and... have been solid. They're not perfect. They're not what I would personally want. Like, my bar for Sonic as a, like, the... movie character is the OVA. Yeah, and true. <laughs> nothing will ever live up to that. I'm convinced. Yeah, fair. But, um, but like, I like what they did with those movies. I like... Um, I really like what they did with Knuckles in the second one. Yeah. I like For sure, definitely. <laughs> I remember when I heard that um like when they announced that Idris Elba was the voice of Knuckles, I mm-hmm. was like, "Oh, this is going to be fantastic." <laughs> yeah. Just for some reason I was just like I I'm, I'm in it. Like that was the thing that got me into it. Yeah, my my reaction w- wasn't like this will be fantastic, but oh, this could be interesting. I wonder how they're going to I wonder what what that's gonna be like and it was good i I liked the second one i liked the first one well enough i don't know it's it's not amazing but it's good it's fun it's it is very much exactly what you would expect of sonic as a character like kind of for this era right like sonic has always been very much a character of whatever era that rendition of him is made in yeah definitely like look at the 90s and sonic underground right <laughs> yeah, exactly like, sonic has always been adapted to whatever was like popular for the times mm-hmm. and the sonic live action movies are very much 2020 sonic like it they check out it all makes sense yeah um and i think they're good movies yeah but yeah, the, the the only reason why I like I was really excited about Idris Elba being Knuckles is like he is an actor that like I only really became aware of after the Dark Tower. And I thought he did a very good Roland. Yeah. Um I'm trying to think if if he stood out to me for being in the Dark Tower from anything else I had seen him in, but I can't think of anything off the top of my head. So that might have been, if not the first thing I saw him in, definitely the most memorable. Like, I was like, oh, I know him from that other thing that I saw him in. Yeah, that that was like the role where, like... like... I, I would have... I would have looked him up after seeing that and realized, oh, he was also in this thing that I saw and that thing that I saw. Yeah, so. that, that's that's pretty much how it worked out for me. Where like I really like the Dark Tower. I think he played a very good role, and I think that movie is way better than it gets credit for. Even if it is like very weird when you like have read the books, it's there's mm-hmm. <laughs> there there's some wonkiness with the whole thing. But 
it's, um, it's like technically actually a sequel, but also kind of a reboot, but also kind yeah. of a straight adaptation. So they, they, like they originally wanted to lean heavier on the sequel thing and then they kind of dropped that and then uh. they're just like, eh, it's kind of based on the book, but not real. It's, it's a whole weird thing. Yeah. And I, it's fair that it's kind of hard to do. Like you have this franchise or I guess it's really just, just kind of the book series. Like they didn't really do anything else with it. Maybe, uh, maybe, there's maybe comics. There's comics. Yeah. That's yeah. What I thought there were comics too. Um, but you, it's not like a super widely known one. Sure. So if you make an adaptation of it, you're going to spend hundreds of millions of dollars making this big budget movie out of it. You kind of have to account for the fact that most of these people are going to be experiencing this world for the first time, not knowing anything about it. Yeah. Um, I do kind of wish they had leaned more towards doing like a direct adaptation for the books which mm-hmm. i mean maybe stephen king didn't want that right like mm, maybe. maybe that's why they wanted to go with the sequel idea i don't really know i'd have to look into that and that information just might not even be out there either way i mean stephen king adaptations are basically always a coin flip so yeah it's, it's, most it's, of them are good it's either going to be hilariously bad or surprisingly good <laughs> i i would say most of them are good um based on all the ones I've seen. Like, I like The Mist, I like The Shining, I like Doctor Sleep, Pet Cemetery is fine. Um, I haven't really seen a lot of them. I'm just yeah. kind of basing that on what I've heard. Yeah, and no. I've seen, the, seen, like, clips and people talking about some of the other ones. Some of them are mixed bags, for sure. Um, but th- they're they're mostly good. Whether or not, like... Like, Pet Cemetery is a good example of, like... It is a movie of its time, right? Mm-hmm. Like it, it's kind of cheesy, r- kind of rough, but like it's fun because it is cheesy. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of like horror content in like the eighties, it's fun for the cheese. Um, but yeah, like the Dark Tower, like th- those books have been getting worked on for decades like Mm -hmm. it's like his magnum opus it's like it's really funny too realizing how like because i remember when the movie was coming out like i didn't know a lot about the series i pretty much only knew like bits and pieces because it's my brother's favorite uh like series of books by stephen king who is his favorite arthur so like i knew bits and pieces about the dark tower but not like a lot of it and i didn't really delve more into it until after the movie which i really enjoyed but um like excuse me um but yeah like he's been working on the dark tower for so long that like some of the movies from like ages and ages ago have references yeah, to the dark tower yeah, in them. True. Like they're everywhere. Um, the mist is the one that stands out in my mind because uh, the beginning of that movie, like the main character is like, a Oh painter, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's, he's working on a cover, painting cover art. For, yeah. Like, the, the book or it's, it's something. the gunslinger. Yeah. Yeah. So, Oh, it's, it's so cool. Like going back and rewatching that stuff and be like, "Hey, wait a minute!" It's always interesting. There's also that whole like, it's like the whole theory that um, it's like all like an interconnected multiverse kind of yeah, deal. Yeah, all of yeah, Stephen King stuff is connected. Is... Which, yeah, there's, it kind of checks like the, out. Like the the villain from I think the I think from the stand is like, I don't think he's the man in black, but he's like some eldritch creature or something from that universe i think who was huh. like, working with i don't remember like i there, there's a wiki of course there's a yeah, fucking wiki yeah so no you, there's you, gotta you, be you can you, you know like the the internet is going to compile every single even vague hint of connection between all of these stories and universes and all that so yeah well and then like the um the both the kid that's actually in the book, The Dark Tower, and then the kids that are being used to attack the tower in the movie, like, 
there's the implication that they have the shine yeah. from the shining. Yeah. Um, and like, that's all connected didn't as they, well. Didn't they even call it that in the movie or I, I, th- I, th- I think the, um, yeah, I think, uh, the man in black does Walter does refer to the kid as having a powerful shine. Yeah. Like, I, I think they do do that, but yeah. Also those books, man, they, they're they're so weird. Like I haven't finished them because I still don't have a full set, and like I'm crazy and obsessive, and I want all of my like covers to be in a matching style. Mm. And the style I started with uh, isn't like in print anymore, and I can't find like the middle books in the series. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> I finally found one of them on eBay. It's not in the best of shape, but I was like, okay, I finally have book five. Now I just need book six, and then I can <laughs> resume reading them. But yeah, I was like halfway through the third or fourth book. I think it was the third one. Um, but uh, it's one of those things where it's like, there's so much weird stuff that happens in those books. But yeah. also, like, it's very memorable. Like, it yeah. sticks in my brain. I will not forget the lobstrosities. <laughs> data chum did a chick god i I still need to finish i think i was like a third of the way through the sixth one and i just stopped reading altogether for a while and yeah still haven't gotten back into it reading is one of those things where it's like i love doing it at this point i should probably just start the whole series over again it's kind of where i'm at yeah it's it's been a, f- a couple of years, a few years at least at this point since. Yeah, same. Since I was, I was tearing through them and then I stopped like maybe about a third of the way through the sixth book. I think it was a sixth book. I'm pretty sure it was a sixth book. And yeah, just never, never found the time or focus to sit down and get the rest of the way through it yeah i have a hard time focusing on books just because like like i love reading and if i get into a book i will do nothing but like sit there and read through that Mm -hmm. book but um i i just i have a hard time focusing on it because there's so many other things i'm like always trying to do and like i like to multitask when i can so like i usually i'll be like playing a game or working on art and at the same time i'll have like a youtube video up or like a show up or something. So it's yeah. hard for me to just like sit and do one thing because I'm always, I have so many things I want to try to get done. I always have multiple things going on. Um, and, or like even just the simple fact that like, I like to be able to like communicate with people. Like I'm always on discord talking with people. And so like when I'm reading a book, if I'm like focused on that, I can't, interact with like other stuff around me like it's something that has to have my full attention um and like if it doesn't have my full attention i'll I'll, like miss pieces and i'll have to go back and like reread parts Mm -hmm. so it's hard for me to like get myself to sit and read but like i have this huge bookshelf with all these books that i want to get around to reading i there's even books that i like pre-order and i haven't read any of them (laughs) Um, one of the artists I used to follow on DeviantArt, uh, I followed her, I, th- I want to say I followed her originally just for, like, her just general art, but, um, she also did comics and was in one of the, uh, OCTs. She was actually mm-hmm. in Law of Talos. She mm-hmm. was the one that won it, uh, and was the final, uh, so it was her characters, Annie and the Professor, that fought against Carl in the final round. But um, a few years back, she started publishing books. I have pre-ordered every single one of her books. I have not read a single one of them. There are now four of them on my shelf. (laughs) Two of them are one series, and two of them, I think, are like another series. Hmm. Um, But yeah, so it's like I have these books piling up, and I've just not read any of them. (laughs) Uh what I need to do is I need to just start with like my manga. Cause like manga is much quicker to get through yeah, because it's sure. more images than text for the most part. But th- those are definitely quicker to get through. Maybe I need to start doing that just to get through more stuff a little quicker. Cause there's 
get something checked off the yeah backlog huh <laughs> just just to feel like i'm making progress it's kind of like how like last year i was trying to play through like a lot of games mm-hmm. um like two years ago i want to say maybe three i started i'd have to check but i started keeping track of like what games i finish like that year right oh yeah huh? and so like last year i played a lot of shorter games um and i finished something like 30 games last year hmm. uh just plowing through them like by like this time last year i had already been through like 12 i've been through like two games this year <laughs> Because I've just been not really able to focus on games much lately. Yeah. Um. I've I've been focusing a lot more on like art and stuff. So my my gaming backlog has been growing. Yeah. And yeah, I have I have a there's a bunch of games I have that I haven't played that I want to, but also I want to save them because I was streaming like a bunch of Metroidvanias mm. a while ago and. I need. To, I still need to finish the messenger eventually at some point, but I also need to stream again at yeah. some point because it's just I haven't been doing that yeah. in forever. And I, I, I'll do something. I'll I'll like stream constantly for several months and then stop for like three years. <laughs> yeah, it's... before deciding to pick it back up again. Because and I mean the most of what I streamed when I was last streaming, I streamed Psychonauts two because Psychonauts two it was great game brand brand new. I wanted to stream it and experience it in real time and all that, and that was that was fun to stream. And uh, I streamed two of the Danganronpa games, and yeah. But after after Psychonauts two, I just have not done like any any streaming, and I haven't even done any of my like solo let's play stuff. And like I have left Kyle Katarin on the bridge of an enemy star destroyer for two years now. <laughs> so <laughs> eventually, yeah. I'm gonna have to also go back and finish my let's play of Jedi Outcast because. I th- I only have like three more levels to go, and I left off at the one that I hated, so that's already out of the way. So all I really need to do is just finish playing the game. And I don't that's I don't know. Maybe I'll do like an animation or something when I come back, where like Liko comes onto the bridge of the Star Destroyer and just finds his skeleton there. <laughs> just it's like oh. I guess I haven't played this game in a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you should do it. I, I'd love to see that. Um, uh, yeah, like, I'm trying to think of, like, all the stuff that I have that's, like, currently, like, midway, like, in progress. Like, um, I mean, I, I, Asteragos is the game that I've been playing on stream, right? And, like, that keeps getting, like, kind of pushed back um so like i'm just like weirdly in the middle of that and i really need to like push forward and finish that i'm in a weird place with it right now where it's like i enjoy the game Mm -hmm. but like it's one of those games that just has a lot of exposition Uh like the characters talk a lot and reading through all that on stream is kind of tiring yeah um like when i when i'm going through like parts of the stage I'll, I'll i'll be having a good time but then like if i hit like a narrative moment where like i have to talk to people to like progress stuff and figure out what i'm doing next it'll be like an hour or so of me just reading text oh wow yeah and no, it, I, it's rough i i get that because and like, like i said i stream two danganronpa games yeah so when it gets to the point where they have actual voice acting i'm like thank god i don't have to talk i don't have to read i don't have to do these voices that i decided these characters kind of have or my impression of them because they are actually yeah. voiced so um but, yeah I mean, it's, it's fun to do that but at the same time doing it for five or six hours straight it's I mean, just... Yeah, no, that's a lot. Um, 
that that's kind of how we played through the Danganronpa games. Was I was just I was doing voices for like all the characters during the non-voiced parts, just because I was playing with my girlfriend. So like I would read out the text out loud while we were going through it, so that um, wouldn't be like both of us sitting there in silence reading the text and being like are you done yet so like we could move forward with the text box kind of thing you know um but yeah like i don't know i enjoy the game but like i'm wondering if like i should find something else for stream and just like finish it off stream Mm -hmm. which the problem with that is like every time i've planned to like do that with a game where I finish it off stream, I end up just stopping entirely. And it's like, I don't want to just stop that game. I do want to finish it, but man, some of the, some of the top, like I stopped paying attention to like the extra dialogue and stuff. Mm. And like the extra, like world building reading and stuff is just, there's so much of it and it takes so long to get through it all. Where it's just like, okay, where do I need to go next? What's the, basic general what is happening and it's not like the game isn't voice there are voices for like a lot of stuff but there is still a lot of stuff that you just have to read yeah and it it piles up um but like yeah i had a similar issue when i was streaming omori where it's like i really like omori but it's just it's a lot of reading and it feels like it kind of drags while streaming it Hmm. like it doesn't feel like a good stream game which is which sucks because I really like that game, um, and that's another one that I need to go back and finish. Though I don't actually own Omori, I was playing it via my friend's Steam library, and every once in a while, like the library sharing thing, like breaks for us. Uh, I don't know why. Huh. Like sometimes it'll just decide that I can't play her games anymore, and then sometimes it'll decide that she can't play my games anymore. So we have to like reshare passwords and like re-enable the sharing thing on each other's computers and then it's it's a whole thing so and we just haven't done that again yet so like i haven't been able to go back to omori um because i don't actually own it in my steam library so it's like i want to play it but i can't i like actually can't right now um but, like, the other one that I had stopped midway through was uh, Chris Tales. I was streaming that for a while. And that was one that I was actually really looking forward to coming out because it's um, it's a turn-based RPG that uses a lot of really interesting time travel mechanics. Um, and when time travel is done well in an RPG... I, I think it can be a really cool thing. Like I'm look at Chrono Trigger. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and there definitely is some kind of DNA of Chrono Trigger in that game of like being able to kind of combo characters abilities together and stuff. But what I like about the time travel with Chris Tales specifically is the way it works. Like when, when you're, kind of exploring in the overworld and you like are kind of splitting time you'll have like the right half of your screen will be in the future and the left half of the screen will be in the past and then you have kind of like a middle triangle that is the present that like so you're moving around and then you have like a little like helper frog character that can actually like jump between time periods and so like he can like go into the past and like interact with a thing so that you can do stuff with it later. Like there's stuff like that, Um, Hmm. which is it's, it's a neat mechanic, but where I really like the time travel mechanic is you can use it in combat. Oh, so enemies will either be on the right or left of you and you can either send them into the future or into the past, depending on which side. And like every enemy has three stages of like, if you send this enemy into the past, it becomes like a smaller version. Or if you send it into the future, it becomes a bigger version. Mm-hmm. And like, it'll interact with different enemies. So like some enemies you want to send into the future because they become like old and like right. they're, they have like weaker defenses, but maybe they're like a mage. And when you send them into the future, maybe they still get weaker defenses, but now they have more powerful magic. Yeah. Huh. You know, 
and so there's like an interesting like checks and balances to the mechanic and then your abilities will also like trigger based off of that so like if you use a water spell on an enemy they become wet and then say they have metal armor if you send them into the future now their armor's rusted oh that's neat um and then one of the characters has these little like little like plants that he like sends out like little Mm. like sprites that'll go and like plant themselves so like you can plant one that'll like heal your party in three turns or you can use the time travel mechanic to like make it happen instantly (laughs) same with like there's like ones that will like poison an enemy but you can you know send it into the future to instantly set it off but the other thing about that too is like if an enemy has like say five stacks of poison on them if you send them into the future, it sets off all those stacks at once. Hmm. So there's like really cool systems that like utilize the time travel in the combat. Um, but like, again, it was one of those games where like it's it's a JRPG. There's a lot of talking, a lot of text, and it just like it felt like it was moving really slow. Like I was a few streams into the game. And, like, had played, like, a decent little chunk of it. And I still hadn't gotten any other party members yet. I had, like, the starting three, basically. Mm. And I was kind of, like, I knew there were other characters. Like, I've... I've... Because, like, they show them off in, like, the trailer and stuff, you know? Like, like most RPGs, it'll be, like, here's here's your, like, anime intro with, like, Mm -hmm. the whole cast or whatever. (laughs) But I still only had the starting three characters, and it felt like I was, like... It just felt like things were moving really slow. So it's like, I love the mechanics of this, but I just don't know if I have the focus to stick with it kind of thing. Uh, And it's been a while since I've played that at this point. The other reason why I haven't gone back to that one, though, is because it's... um, I have it on my PS4, and I'm just really bad at focusing on my console stuff. My console stuff tends to always fall behind everything else. (laughs) Because, again, I try to multitask things, and the computer's more convenient for that. Fair. Oh. But yeah. I, uh, I would like to get back to streaming and doing the Let's Plays at some point. I just... I don't know. It, it's a lot of... I have to... I have to be like in the right mood, yeah, for the right length of time, because I mean there will be a point where where I think eh, maybe I'll stream today, and then I'm just like nah, maybe not. So it, that that has to stay with me long enough for me to actually decide to do it. And, yeah, and that that's hard, especially and, when you have other stuff yeah. like going on, or so it's like trying so, to schedule the time for it is rough. Yeah, and then. I mean, like I said, I, I streamed Psychonauts 2 because it had just come out and I wanted to experience it. Yeah. And if it, it seemed like a fun thing to to do a, a blind live stream for because it's yeah. live reaction. Like, oh, the they, they did the... They, First time playthroughs they are the thing always with this character interesting. And, yeah. yeah. And there's plenty to react to. And I also did that for the... Uh, for the new, am- well, it was new at the time, Amnesia, and you know that's a horror game. So yeah, really, the only way to experience that is you know it blind. Bl- blind live stream yeah. or let's play or whatever. Because once once you've played through it the first time, it's like oh, there's gonna be a jump scare around that corner. I'm ready for it now. So you're not you're not gonna get my real reaction to it. I'm just gonna be like oh no, the scary thing jumped out from around the corner. Yeah. So. I, I will say some horror games do a good job of subverting that expectation. Um, I, I've not played much of Dead Space 2. I played a very small section of it once at uh, Matt's place. But I do distinctly remember like going through this hallway where like I walk in and like this enemy jumps out of like this vent on the left side. Oh yeah, it's, no, he jumped it's, out of the vent on the right side, and it and it jumped, scared me, and I was like ah, and so like I fight that, and then like I go a little further down the hallway, and I died 
And so I had to re go through that section. Yeah. I was like, okay, but it's like I know random. where you're coming through. They like, shuffled it around. The, yeah, the I was like, I know where points. you're coming from. So I'm going to walk on the left side and have my gun ready. And instead, it came from the left side. And like, <laughs> I was like, you fuck. That's... Like, it got me again with the same fucking jump scare. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like. And that, that's the kind of thing that, yeah. that they can only really do in like an action horror game. Because yeah. if, if it was like in one of the amnesia games where it's just walk around and you hide from the monsters, they wouldn't really be able to do that because, for one thing, you're probably a little bit less likely to die. So yeah, they wouldn't need to like ran- shuffle ran- stuff around, randomize like that. Yeah. certain spawn points or whatever. So there's pros and cons to different kinds of horror, really, when you think about it. But that's a definitely a point in favor of. Like the action horror stuff, like the yeah Resident Evil and um, Dead Space and all that. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, Resident Evil Four remake was was pretty good. Uh, watched bits and pieces of a few people I follow play through that. Just speaking of those games. Hmm. Um. I've actually never played Resident Evil 4. It's like... I have not either. I haven't played 2, 3, or 4, or 5, or (laughs) 6. I say, that's fair. I've played a little bit of Resident Evil 1 and a little bit of Resident Evil 7, and that's kind of it. I've mostly experienced these games from, like, watching other people. Yeah. I played a little bit of 8. But but it was, like, New Game Plus, because... Everyone else played through it when we seven did the initial playthrough. Seven and eight are the only ones that I have, like, fully played. I played a little bit of the remaster of one. Okay. And, well, no, and I also played the uh, the original one because it was when I had my PSP and it was on the PlayStation Store or whatever. Oh, nice. And they had all the, uh, not all of them, but a bunch of uh, original PS1 games, so... Final Fantasy 7 and Resident Evil and Verse Silent Hill. Okay. Um, but yeah, didn't didn't really care for Resident Evil 1 or the remastered version. One is rough. My my problem wasn't the graphics. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's the controls. Yeah. One one is just it's... like rough to control. And like that that's in a lot of ways the lack of control you have in the control scheme is part of the horror it's what makes like the tension like more tense um but yeah mm. it's <laughs> there there that is a kind of kind of seems like a cop out <laughs> yeah no 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 it's a, they're supposed to be shitty controls because it represents the the player feeling uh, the, the panic and lack of control in the situation <laughs> I think you just made shitty controls, Capcom. <laughs> well, th- they made shitty controls because that was the era. Let's be well, honest. Yeah. Nothing controlled great on the PS1. Yeah, true. As much as I love Mega Man Legends, for example, that game controls like ass. <laughs> but, um, like, no one... Dual sticks weren't really a regular thing yet. Yeah. And so tank controls were common. Um... But, like, I, I do think there is an argument for, like... Because there are versions of one where you can play it with, like, a regular dual-stick control scheme. Mm-hmm. And it loses something in mm. that shift in control. Because that disempower... Like, it adds to that feeling of disempowerment that makes the horror... Horror. Um, because... Once you turn something into a full action game, it stops really being scary, and it's more just kind of... It can still have tension, but you're just kind of going in and blowing stuff up. Um, yeah, for sure. So, like, there is an argument that there is something to the control scheme that actually adds to the feeling of the game. Doesn't make the control scheme good, it just it does serve a purpose um but like but yeah like resident evil 4 is one of those ones that like i've always heard of as being like one of the classics yeah. you know it's it's like 
one of the best games of its era. There's a reason why it has been re-released on literally everything since it's come out. Like, it originally came out on the GameCube as a GameCube exclusive. Which itself was a really weird thing to have. Yeah. Um, But then, like, it's been re-released on PlayStation got re-released on PlayStation 2 and then it got re-released on PlayStation 3 and then it got re-released on PlayStation 4 and then it finally got a remake like it's been on so many consoles um and they're just like remaking all of the Resident Evil games so they're going to remake 5 and 6 eventually and then they're going to remake 7 and 8 <laughs> even though they're only a couple years old at this point so why even bother? I, I would hope I mean, that if 7 and 8 get remade, it'll be a while. You know? Yeah, like I, you would think. <laughs> hopefully. But, um... I there, There's this funny thing right now happening with this year in particular, where, like, all the best games that have come out are remakes from the GameCube. Specifically the GameCube. You got Resident Evil 4. You got Metroid Prime. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's... I forgot about that. Botan Kaitos is getting remade and re-released really? in like a couple months. That's that's was that a big thing? Because I don't. It, it's a it's a sleeper hit. It's one of those things where like Botan Kaitos didn't have a huge following when it came out, and it still is more of a like cult game. But it is a cult classic. It does have a pretty dedicated following. Huh. And yeah, they announced a remaster like it was a while ago now. But yeah, that's supposed hmm. to be coming out in a few months, like later this year. Um, Interesting. But yeah, it's it, just like there's it, all these GameCube games if, that are coming out in 2013. If you asked me to write up a list of things that I thought would get remade anytime soon, that would not have been on it. Yeah, no, that's fair. Honestly, there are so many games that have gotten, like, remakes and re-releases that, like, I never thought it would happen. I mean, look at what we've been playing, Klonoa. Yeah. I never thought Klonoa would actually get, a, like, another remake. Because, let's be clear, it has been remade before on the Wii, and it sold terribly. Huh. Like, it did terrible on the Wii. I didn't, I didn't even Wii. know that. Yeah, I didn't know that never, either until I found out about it, it like happened, later so down the road. That tells you how big a splash that made. <laughs> there were there were some changes I think between the original and like the Wii version that um, a lot of people didn't like at the time, hmm. and I think the version we're playing the the Phantom Reverie series I, I could be wrong on this but I think it leans more on like the Wii version of the game. Um, hmm like graphics notwithstanding right right but um i think part of its better reception too is just the fact that like the game is like the series is a little more well known now because there's some decent following youtube channels that have shown their love for the franchise um and it's also the fact that it also has a remake of the second game which has never been re-released since the original ps2 Hmm. Yeah, so like true. I think both of those factors kind of helped the the recent remake which god I was so excited when they announced that cuz the first game is still one of the like holy grails for my PS1 collection <laughs> but at this point there's a lot of stuff that I need to re get on my PS1 if I want to have like that that high end collection that I once dreamed of because I sold a couple of things, I sold Sweet in two, because I made a huge profit on it. Oh well, <laughs> but um, because I bought it when it was like, I think like one twenty to one fifty, and it's I think it's over two hundred now. Wow, I, I made a decent so enough profit on it, and it was a game that I did not have a personal attachment to, and I needed money, you know. Fair. Yeah, I still check out Goodwill every once in a while and see what's what they have for four or five dollars, and 
Uh, price charting is like, this game goes for $100 for just the discs. It's like, okay, I'm taking that, even though I have no idea what this series is. Yep. And that's the only reason I have that uh, Gundam RPG. Oh, uh... uh I, I, I don't even yeah. remember what it was called, but yeah, it was a Gundam RPG. MS the, Saga. Yeah, that's the one. Yep. Yeah. I want to play that game. I found found that at Goodwill. I thought, huh, this looks interesting. I'll look it up and see. Oh, it's going. It's selling for eighty dollars. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll just hold on to that and see. You know, if it maybe goes up even more, maybe I'll sell it in the future because I have no no attachment to it. And then I looked it up and found out it was a Gundam RPG, and I thought, oh, that might be a little more interesting to hold on to than I thought. But yeah, still haven't ever actually played it. But yeah, I also have a <laughs> copy because because you had mentioned it to me, and I was like, I'm adding this to my list of things to look for. And then like we got a copy in at the shop or something <laughs> like a month later. Like it was very close to the same time, so like I ended up getting a copy. Um, but yeah, I also haven't had a chance to like boot it up and play it. But it is definitely a game that I want to get to at some point. Just just to see what it's like. Yeah. Gundam games are such a hit and miss kind of mixed bag, I feel like. There's like a surprising number of them and yes. so many different styles, so many different like genres even yeah i mean well like you got the battle assault franchise which is just a fighting game yeah you have dynasty warriors gundam which is literally what it says on the tin yeah it's dynasty warriors dynasty warriors is just its own genre like they can make any game a dynasty warriors game yeah they did it they made a zelda dynasty warriors game they didn't call it that but they still called it hyrule warriors Warriors. yeah Yeah. then there was fire emblem warriors yeah oh Uh, yeah yeah i forgot about that one but yeah the technical (laughs) name of the genre is musu they Hmm. are it is the musu series um which was originally used to refer to dynasty warriors and samurai warriors which are two basically the same games by the same company oh I was I was waiting to hear that completely di- completely different games, the same style, but different companies or whatever. They just happen to make them at like the same time or whatever. Yeah, but no, no. If they're the same company, then it's like, that okay, yeah. that style <laughs> of like I want to compare it most to like a beat 'em up. Um, but like that style of game is very specifically done by like that one company. And, like, not many other people really delve into it. Occasionally you see, like, an anime game that's done in that style. Mm-hmm. But, like, I feel like those are few and far between. I, I Comparatively. Think it, it seems like something that a lot of people would think is really easy to do. So I could see a lot of, of those really shitty, really crappy, low-effort indie games trying to do it. Like the zombie shooting kind of deal where it's like for a while everybody was making stand in one place and shoot all the zombies games and it it seems like the that i remember those dynasty warriors kind of formula would be something that a lot of people would also try to just do because all you really if you think about it all you really need is a character with a weapon and a bunch of really weak enemies to just kill all at once so how hard can it be? And then you try to actually make a game, and turns out making a game is really fucking hard. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and God, like, making a game with that number of entities all, like, doing things, I'm sure can't be easy, which is probably why you don't see more, like, yeah. copies of the Musu series. Definitely. Um, there was one that came out on the 360 called 99 Nights. I remember that. I think we played a demo of it or something. The game is really cool, and I have one complaint about the game, and it's it is a big enough complaint that like it kept me from ever finishing it. Hmm. There's no co-op. Like oh, there's no multiplayer. Yeah. It is a single player only game. And those games, like my fondest memories of playing through Dynasty Warriors are playing with friends. Because they are the perfect couch co-op games of you just sit together with a friend and you just murder a bunch of people. You, like, compete for getting, like, the most general kills or you compete for being, 
like the first to get to the final boss of the stage and like getting that kill or you just compete to see who kills the most enemies and like dynasty warriors um you know it has like basically uh, like milestones where like in a single map if you kill like 50 enemies like one of the other generals on your like team like on your faction side will be like ah oh, you are a great warrior you'll be spoken of in legends like you know they, they have like a little announcement thing for every 50 kills you get hmm. 99 nights was at a scale where it did that for every 500 kills you oh got. wow like it was dynasty warriors turned up to 11 it was like the over the top anime bullshit version of it <laughs> and it's such a cool game that would benefit so much from having some kind of multiplayer in it yeah but the fact that it is a single player only game like it really makes it just like lose its luster really quickly because it's like i'm doing the, cool things yeah. i'm killing all these enemies and i'm bored i've gone through like two <laughs> stages and it's just yeah yeah so you know something that when you think about it, it's really surprising they didn't do any kind of Dynasty Warriors like spinoff for because there is a level in that game where you basically do the exact same thing. Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, you know what? That's that, fair. That, that would be a perfect game to to do a spinoff like that yeah. for. Yeah, because you could just you have an infinite army of heartless and then all these characters with keyblades and magic and all kinds of crazy rpg anime shit that's a recipe for success if i ever heard one (laughs) yeah a kingdom hearts warriors game would actually be pretty cool i i hate that that's true but it's (laughs) it is and and they they already basically did it with that one part in kingdom hearts 2 where you just fight a thousand heartless yeah you don't it's not actually a thousand heartless it's like a couple dozen at a time while there's just this rendered army of low poly heartless around you that eventually spawn in to be more yeah you you fight a specific amount of them at a time like where they're actively attacking you i love that section because of the the hardware limitation yeah If, if they if they remade it for ps4 or 5 they could probably actually fit a thousand heartless in that in the memory there so i mean yeah but with with the um the hd collection that you can get the the story so far collection yeah like they probably could have but like why go through that extra for yeah it? just they're just they're just re-releasing just t- it take the original and make it look a little bit nicer um, and then do it again when the PS4 comes out. And then, then probably again for the 5 when you can release the whole collection of all the actual games instead of just the 1, 2, 3 and Birth by Sleep and cutscene interpretations of um, the it's Chain of Memories. and uh... No, Chain of Memories is playable. No, that's right. Yeah. It's um... recoded. Yeah, recoded, recoded was the, the one that the, was just the cutscenes. Yeah, the the sh- the one that was a mediocre mobile game that then became a shitty DS game that mm. they just boiled down to the cutscenes. It's that one and uh, three fifty eight over two days, where it's just the cutscenes. Yeah. Um, like, do you just hate Money Square Enix? Release a full collection of all the games that you possibly can. People will buy it. Yeah. Especially if it's all on one console. And they don't have to play Kingdom Hearts on the PlayStation 2, and then Chain of Memories on the Game Boy Advance, and then Kingdom Hearts 2 on the PlayStation 2, and then Kingdom Hearts 3 on the PlayStation fucking 4! They they did do a re-release of Chain of Memories on the PS2, where yeah. they like updated it into like 3D, and like that's the version that is on yeah. the the collections right still didn't still couldn't get into it so i guess it wasn't the it wasn't just the mechanics that i wasn't enjoying so it's funny because like people who do like chain of memories generally hate the remake version of it huh they, they prefer the gba version i didn't really like either version <laughs> i loved that just, game but yeah. i also love me a deck builder so mm. um <laughs> I think it very specifically fits to my niche. Um, but yeah, like 
you you have it's just it was just a, a little too complicated for me going from hit things with keyblade and cast thunder on everything to mash now X a whole need... lot and sometimes trying exactly <laughs> I, mean, I i liked the action rpg hacky slashy kind of combat which was yeah really the only reason i even wanted to play kingdom hearts 3 because i had long since stopped giving a fuck about the story and all that like i couldn't I probably couldn't even have told you, like, what the fuck was going on in 2. <laughs> like. No, that's fair. Even it's... having played through it, like, probably twice by that point. But it's just. Nomura you, you, is one of those. You don't those... play it for the story. You play yeah. it to, to to shoot lightning bolts out of a giant key and hit things with the giant key. And, uh, yeah. Xehanort turns into a boat, Sora believes in himself, and the player mashes X a lot. <laughs> and sometimes triangle. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Nah, Nomura is one of those like people who I don't think should have full control over writing of a story ever. I, I He really needs someone to rein in his nonsense. Like, just Kingdom Hearts as a whole, basically after the first game, goes so far off the rails. Like, like Chain of Memories was okay, and 2 was okay, starting to get a little weird, but like this is followable. And then after that, it's just, it's so much. And, it, like, and it's like across like 12 different handhelds. Yeah, it's, that's it's a whole thing. That's the main thing. Is yeah. That just, there's so many things... And apparently they all matter in the context of the story. So if yeah. you ha if you didn't have a if you didn't have a 3DS at the time or <coughs> yeah. or a Game Boy Advance at the right time, or you didn't get the collections when they came out because you didn't have a PS3 at the time, or you just yeah you you miss one thing the and the full suddenly... collection is on PS4 now. And it's like okay, you can get through it and you can get the story of a lot of it. There there are some things that are kind of left out gameplay wise because they just did the cutscene stuff but general consensus i hear from most people is you're not really missing anything with those games 358 over two i've heard like differing stuff where like most people kind of are like not a great game fairly skippable and then some people are like no i love this game and i'm upset that it's only the cutscenes. <laughs> So th there's enough. like two camps in that. And it's like, okay, one of those very divisive parts of the story. But um, but you have to know who the, all of these characters are that got introduced in this game that is very divisive and some people really like, some people yeah. hated it, some people have never played it, some people are just like, whatever. Well, and when you get to three... I have no idea who half of these fucking characters are. Well, and then there's connection to a completely different franchise in um, in the 3DS one, uh, Dream Drop Distance. Oh, yeah, because they did uh, The World Ends With You, didn't they? Like, yeah, they, uh, it, it connects to The World's End With in. You. Those characters show up. Do you have to play The World Ends With You? Like, is, is Twiwi important to the Kingdom Hearts lore? I'm not a hundred percent sure. Tui is a good game, no, but never like, never played it. But at this point, like, at this point, you can play everything on one console. But like, when it was coming out, it's like, okay, you need a PS2, a Game Boy Advance, a PSP, a DS, then a 3DS. Like, then you need like a phone <laughs> because there's like three mobile games that happens. Yeah, which. <laughs> Or, like, apparently the Star Wars prequel trilogy of the whole thing. Yeah. Like, even more than Birth by Sleep was, which itself was very prequely. And I, I, I kind of got into Birth by Sleep, but... Most people yeah. I know really liked Birth it by was, Sleep. Like, once I got a handle on some of the weird magic mechanics, because you... There's like some weird thing where you combine spells or something to make different spells or you it was, it was some weird thing like that and once I started figuring that out I was having more fun with it but mm. I only got through two of the characters of the three characters campaigns cuz by the 
by the time I got to the third one, it's just more of the same stuff, and it's not really different enough. Sure. I mean, it's three different characters. They all have their own story that kind of they intersect with each other at a few points in the story, but I just it didn't keep me engaged long enough to finish it. So that's why I'm glad yeah. we live in the era of YouTube. I can just watch videos yeah, on it and true. S- get I, enough I got, of the story to be satisfied. I I got enough out of it that I recognized when the important characters showed up in three and got their plots finally resolved and all that. So yeah, it was just, I was satisfied with what I got out of it, even though it wasn't, a hundred percent of the game i just yeah no that's fair but it is really important to know these characters for kingdom hearts 3 so yeah and god forbid they put any sort of explanation of anything that you missed in kingdom hearts 3 itself they (laughs) basically introduced the bad guy of the whole fucking series and why he's the bad guy and what he wants to ultimately do and they re-explain it in 3 a little bit, but it's still... Like, if you haven't played or watched somebody play or read the Wikipedia page for Birth by Sleep, you're going to be very confused. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, if there's one game in the series that it's... One non-numbered game in the series that's vitally important to play, it's probably that one. Which is probably why they made it one of the playable ones in the collection. And yeah. Not, and not just a bunch of cutscenes. <laughs> it's definitely one of the most important to the story. Which, it, it's just, it bothers me that so much of, like, the important parts of the story were handheld spinoffs. Yeah. And it's just, uh It's too much. Too much. Yeah. But, is what it is. Kingdom Hearts is a lot. And you know what? And there's, there's, they're still making another one. Yeah, I don't they, know if it's sure it, are. God, I, I forgot about it. I don't know if they it. specifically said it was four or if it's gonna be some other new weird spinoff thing. But I, I think it's supposed to be four. I would say I feel like part of me wants to say they did announce it as Kingdom Hearts four, but now I'm doubting that. <laughs> I'm like, wait, did everyone just start calling it Kingdom Hearts 4, but they never actually called it that themselves? They were yeah, just like, could, Kingdom like, Hearts, just here assumed, you go. Here's it Sora was again. Be four. Like, why, first of all, why would you assume it's 4? <laughs> I mean, between 2 and 3, we had like 12 games. Yeah, there, there were there were, a, there were definitely a good chunk of games. Like, that... King, Kingdom Hearts 3 is like the 15th game they made. <laughs> God, yeah, it's so, insane. And, yeah, and then when uh, that first trailer or animation bit from Birth by Sleep came out, everyone was like, oh my god, it's Kingdom Hearts 3, there's going to be all these new characters. It's, like, it's it's not Kingdom Hearts 3, it's actually a prequel, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, now I want to look that up and be like, was it actually announced as Kingdom Hearts 4? I, I don't care enough to look it up, Yeah, like, like, I, I, I want to look it up. <laughs> I don't actually know if they, if they said at any point that it was for, or if it was just a trailer, like a short animation or whatever. It's like, hey, yeah. here's Sora. He's in a. Here's he's, Sora. He's got normal person shoes for once. Yeah, he's. Uh, <laughs> My boy's all grown up. He, he's he sort of died, but also not really, but kind of. He's. Something we're, something. We're dragging this out because. Yeah. It's it's Kingdom Hearts. Everybody loves Kingdom Hearts, and it's not Kingdom Hearts without Sora. Even though Birth by Sleep was basically Kingdom Hearts without Sora, and it was fine. I mean, he's in it, but for like a cameo, basically. Like I think they meet they meet the kids that were on the island. Yeah, and then they're like little kids, so yeah, they're they're babies. Yeah. Um. And Tara's like, hey, Riku, you want to be a Keyblade dude someday? And Riku's like, fuck yeah. It's like, well, too bad. Sora's going to get it. Because <laughs> he has a weird heart that's actually like 15 different people's hearts. But 
there's time travel, so it's not happened yet, but he will eventually. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um... Basically, everybody in Kingdom Hearts is either secretly Sora or secretly Xehanort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's all that, you need to know. Out. Yep, you're you're either Norded or you're Sorad. Um, yeah, no, that, that's. I'm so glad that I just like. By the time three came out, I just no longer really gave a fuck. I was like, cool. I'm just gonna watch some YouTube videos and be like, huh, neat. And then I'm going to move on with life. And I'm going to enjoy other people I know who are very into the series enjoying the games. And they can tell me about how much fun they're having. And I can be like, I'm happy for you. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is that is a series I am so happy to just not have to care about anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh... There was a point where I like considered like getting the the story so far collection on the PS4, hmm. so that like I could have like all of it. And I was like, "Yeah, but why though? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wait, why? Why do I want this? Why do I care? Uh, I already have the HD one point five and two. It was a big deal when I was in middle school, and I want to, I want to recapture that nostalgia. Except you just play the first two again." Yeah, maybe Chain of Memories if if you uh, if you liked that one. <laughs> but <laughs> let, let, let's let's be honest. I'm just gonna go back to the second game, and I'm gonna spend all my time building gummy ships again. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna do. That's all I actually care about. Literally, the only reason I have considered playing three is for the gummy stuff. Yeah, <laughs> is because of the Einhander reference. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> Because Square continues to use Einhander, I, I want I want them to do something with that franchise. They will do everything with it, but make a game. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like I would kill for just like even just a re-release of the original PS One game as like a download for like new consoles. Hmm. Like, but I would also just love for them to do like just like a like an update for that like an updated graphics version of Einhander would be awesome just i a, think a remastered yeah. version or something yeah. remastered of the ps1 cult classic that you guys continually make references to in all your other games and you are, you are still acknowledging it you know there are people out there who like this game just do something with it stop putting it in other games <laughs> it's I'm not actually sure what the weirdest reference to Einhunter is at this point because, like, <laughs> they've had some bizarre ones, right? So, like, Kingdom Hearts 3 has a secret gummy ship boss yeah. that is the final boss. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, it has a gummy ship blueprint that is the um, the Estrella, the, like, classic Einhunter yeah. ship. Um, final Fantasy fourteen has... So back in A Realm Reborn, the very first expansion, which is like 10 years ago now, which blows my mind. I mm -hmm. don't like to think about that. But like back in base A Realm Reborn, one of the late game dungeons leading up to, uh, I think it's actually the last dungeon leading up to the first expansion, Heaven's Ward. Um, the first boss is this like weird bird thing that is named Einhander. Oh. And so they've changed this boss since because they, they've gone back and changed a lot of the old dungeons. Uh, they made it to where there's, like, NPCs that you can run through the dungeons with. So, like, if you don't want to interact with other people, you can avoid it for, like, 90% of the game now. Oh, that's nice. Um, but... So they changed a lot of the boss fights for that. But the original way this boss worked um, is this, like, bird thing, which, of course, has, like, one arm, like, one little claw sticking down. It would fly up, and it would, like, grab, like, different, like, gun parts and stuff. And it basically <laughs> had the gun pod mechanic of wow. Einhander in this boss fight. So, like, it'd go and it'd grab a flamethrower, and then it would do, like, a cone AoE. And wow. then it would go and, like, grab a Gatling gun. Like... It was such a cool 
fight and like it still is and it still is this reference to einhander um but like that one's really weird because it's like a weird bird thing with like <laughs> like i think it had like ram horns or something like the big curly ones you know i mean i imagine it would be pretty strange to have a full spaceship a technologically advanced spaceship in a fantasy game i mean i know they have like the the mechs and airships yeah. and things so they probably maybe could have done something like that there, but there, there's literally a part like in so in the third expansion uh shadow bringers um they they have a set of raids that is based on uh, the weapons from Final Fantasy VII. Hmm. So you, you have the weapon saga. The first fight is Ruby Weapon. Right. Um, the second fight is Sapphire Weapon. And instead of being like a instead of being a trial where you go in with like a group of eight people and fight it, it's a special solo instance where you are fighting it with literally a Gundam. They oh. put you in a Gundam and they have you fight this thing like floating on the water. It's the coolest part of the game. Wow. It only happens once. They never use it again. I really want to pilot the G-Warrior again because it's so cool. Um, but yeah, they just throw you in a Gundam and have you fight this thing. So it's like, on one hand, you're right. On the other hand, they literally put you in a Gundam <laughs> to like a couple expansions later. Like... So, yeah, that's a whole other <laughs> yeah. thing. There's there's some wild stuff that happens in that game. But then, like, the other really weird reference to Einhander comes in World of Final Fantasy, where towards the end of the game, there's, like, there's, like, machine things. So, like, you have the, the monsters you capture... Um, which are just like regular monsters and you put them in your um, your prismariums, the little little cubes, your pokeballs. Mm -hmm. Later in the game, you start fighting machine monsters called the Cogna. Mm -hmm. And the Einhander ship is just one of them. It's just there as like a thing. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's just, it's, it's weird. It's not really like a dress. It's just like, and here's the spaceship from other game as machine creature from other world don't worry about it it's fine <laughs> it's fine it's, it's a weird game it's a great game but it's a weird game lots of references i think somebody at square enix is trying to tell the higher ups something like let us let us make this game please i'm gonna keep putting references in the other games until you either stop me or let me make a fucking einhander game yeah <laughs> I think the weirdest part to me is, like, Einhander feels like such a, like, unknown, like, cult classic, right? Mm -hmm. Like, very few people, I think, really remember that game much. And they have other franchises that are more well-known um, that don't get the same treatment, right? Yeah. Like, m Brave Fencer Musashi and yeah. Samurai Legend Musashi, like, that's that's two entries in that franchise. Those those seem to have a little more like people are a little more cognizant of their existence. Uh, Xeno gears is another example of like, people seem a little more cognizant of its existence. Like they may not be like huge, super well-known things that everyone played, but I guarantee you more people know about them than Einhander. So why is Einhander alone? They them, keep making reference yeah, don't to see them putting references to, all these other games. Yeah, I think somebody at at Square Enix just really likes Einhander and wants to make another game and some CEO is like, "No, and stop putting references to it in our other games." Right? <laughs> no, you can't have another shoot 'em up. But I guess you can put a reference to the shoot 'em up inside our RPG. <laughs> it's, it's just so weird. I love it, but it's so weird. Um, but yeah, there, there's a, there's a specific piece of art for that game that comes up a lot in my brain because 
like I feel like it's a reference to something specific because I've seen similar art for other games that are like the same kind of layout. And if I remember right, it's actually the art like inside the case when you remove the disc. Mm -hmm. But it's like the ship in a hangar with like all the gun pods next to it. And I've seen that like exact same like angle and layout of like here's like this ship and here's like all the like attachments in other stuff so like there's the zoids uh tactical rpg on the 360 zoids assault Mm -hmm. it also has that art of like here's a zoid and here's all its weapons and it's like is this like i is it reference to something specific coincidence um I think uh, I think it was actually FTL actually also had an art in that similar style. The spaceship roguelike game. Yeah. <laughs> huh. It's like one of the like Steam profile backgrounds or something. Oh, huh. It's it's so weird. It like it keeps coming up, and I'm like, I feel like there's like something I'm missing here that I'm just like, is this just like some kind of common thing? With, like, military stuff or ships or something. I don't know. It came to mind. Or could be, like, a, a deliberate reference. Yeah. Like uh, like the the Akira motorcycle shot. Right. You know? Yeah, the, the, the Every, bike slide that do everyone's that done. Because it's deliberately a reference to Akira. Yeah. So, like, I, I'm wondering if there is something that that, like, particular, like, scene setup is referenced to that I just don't know about. Hmm. But that's, that's, there you go. There's your fun, weird thought for the day. What is this weird hanger set up a reference to? (laughs) A cat was loudly expressing her wishes to leave the room (laughs) yeah but yeah Yeah, it's it's hard to say without seeing it myself but like if they're the the same angle and the same background kind of like it's from the same the the same kind of composition and everything like that it might just be because it's easy to do like bulky uh yeah. military kind of hardware with that perspective and like it could easy be that too horizon line it might be something to do with that but yeah or I'll, maybe it is a deliberate reference to something I'll, that... I'll, I'll pull up some examples after we finish recording and show you because it's just it's one of those things that like anytime i think of einhander i think of this one specific like piece of art from it hmm. and it just because it keeps popping up for me in other stuff but uh but yeah it's it's weird Mm -hmm. the the ftl one is a little more like simplified but it's still that same sort of like the same composition it's the same sort of like idea like it's very like similar in its execution even though it's like it's a bit more simplified and like it's not quite at like the same angle and stuff it's still the same kind of setup so Hmm. but yeah um yeah i'll have to pull those up after we uh finish up this uh spell cast but which which would probably be about now would be a good time to do that because yeah the hour and a half mark (laughs) unfortunately i was like man this would have been the perfect chance to segue into another roguelike that i wanted to talk about (laughs) but we we should cut the recording here so i'll have to save that for next time and i'll probably have more hours in the game by then and have more to say anyway so it all works out there you go so i I guess our list of things to cover in each spell cast is a list of things to start talking about and then once we finish that, we go off on a tangent for the next hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. There was a point where I looked over at the time and I was like, oh, okay, we're, we're, we're way earlier in the spell because than I, I thought. I thought we were at like an hour. We were only at 30 minutes. I was like, <laughs> we got plenty of time to get to these other topics I want to talk about. No, no, nope. didn't happen. <laughs> we, we had to talk about uh, 
Dark Tower and uh, and Kingdom Hearts. And Kingdom Hearts, yeah. <laughs> oh no, we made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, show adaptations of games and yeah, yeah. That's a thing that just happens. That's I'm pretty sure we mentioned it, but that's why we did a podcast because we yeah because we would ramble on stuff for hours at a time, have conversations that go on for. A long time and change subjects like it's no big deal and then go back and try to figure out like how the fuck did we start talking about this thing it's like well we were talking about that and then we you mentioned this and that got me thinking about this and then and, and, and trace it all the way back to the start where we were talking about it's fun to trace <laughs> stuff like that back yeah i think when we started when we originally had the idea for doing a podcast we were going to do that like at, when we got to the end of it, we were gonna be like, "Okay, what did we talk about?" Well, we were just and talking like, about trace this it and backwards. trace it backwards to the start. But maybe. Yeah, I think we were. I think we maybe had the idea to do that, and we just never did. We didn't actually do <laughs> yeah. that. So. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this has been Spellcast. Thanks for listening. If you have been listening this whole time, we'll see you next time. And we still don't have good outro things. 